Hi guys. Hi everyone. Hi. How is everyone? I hope you guys are having a good night. Um, it is Friday, Friday night. And we are, today was one of those days I was doing a lot of stuff on YouTube today. And um, I was having one of those weeks where we were just trying to put out content and my studio was being really wild. Like all of my data was just a mess and I was losing data. And so I didn't get a third video out today because my second video got delayed. My first video was in the data issue mix up area. And all in all, I feel like I've been dealing with technical difficulties all week, telling YouTube, hey, what's going on with my channel? And YouTube just going, whatever, you know? So welcome, thank you for bearing with me. I know that you guys might not be seeing or experiencing these issues. It's only on my back end that this is happening. So I'm not saying that you're having those issues. Um, this is just what I've been dealing with all week and it's been kind of annoying. But we're gonna do a video on Classical Abbey and The Transformed Wife. And I was actually thinking about this because Classical Abbey was constantly being recommended in my ads constantly over the summer. And then I just realized she's Ben Shapiro's sister. So he's probably, I'm guessing, paying for her boosted channel because the amount of subscribers she has versus the number of ads she had that she was putting out into YouTube doesn't make sense. There's no feasible way to be at the top of YouTube's algorithms recommended to everyone. So I'm guessing that Ben in his deep pockets, this guy's worth $25 million was somehow behind this. Um, but yeah. That's what we've been dealing with today. You can't escape her ads. That is definitely for sure. So, um, <laughs> thank you, Cecilia. Okay, so today has been, Ben Shapiro is a conservative pundit, I guess. That's like the nicest way to say it. Um, okay. So well before I was on YouTube, I did this writing thing and I covered a lot of stuff with um, like the just the Duggars and the sort of messiness that's in the hypocrisy of these various worlds. And um, I had been getting away from some of that. Um, yeah, he's not a very nice guy, but well, we're not talking about Ben Shapiro right now by any means. I'm just saying that, the, that she's Ben Shapiro's sister. Um, and if you like Ben Shapiro, that's fine. Anyways, um, I am going to be talking not about Ben Shapiro, more about the messages that are on these channels that I find concerning. Um, the transfer of wife is on the flip side, a little bit different. She is older. She is Lori Alexander. Her biggest like world by any, like her biggest audience is on Facebook. She's got like a hundred thousand followers. Her Insta or her YouTube channel is relatively small considering. So she is this very conservative woman that is very much about the uh, biblical wife. And she doesn't like women that work out of the house. She doesn't like that women use daycare. Um, she doesn't like single moms. And it's kind of sad. And it's kind of toxic. Um, her channel isn't very large, but Lori Alexander has always been this like, I just, I see her tweets and I'm like, I can't believe I'm listening to this. I can't believe I'm hearing this. What is this woman's issue? 
Um, and I'm always amazed about the things that she gets upset about. Like she's, she gets mad about women swearing and, um, the biblical womanhood and how it's offensive. It's, it's a dang mess. So, um, she posts a lot on her blog and she does work outside of her home, which is weird. Like she does work. This is the irony of a lot of these women that do this stuff is they want to talk about how women should stay at home and women should do this and women should do that. Yet they're always, they're all working. Like having a YouTube channel isn't for these women, like classical Abby is spending all this time and money putting out this content. There's no way she's not doing this as a job because she calls herself the first Christian or the first conservative influencer, which is not true. I was reading her about and I was just like, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever read on her website. But um, we are going to start with, um, hold on a second. Let me get the transformed wife up here. I, I thought I had a bunch of her videos downloaded, but I don't. So I'm just going to go to her website. So she is, I'm going to just show you her website because she's more of a blogger. She's not a huge YouTuber, um, but she is very concerning. So here is her website. Um, now, Lori, about me, she says that she has been married to Ken since 1980. She's got four grown children and they all walk in truth. She has nine grandchildren so far. Uh, she has had 23 years of a difficult marriage, but the years have been only getting better and better as I apply God's principles to my life. So apparently she had a bad marriage and now she's got a better marriage. I don't understand it. Anyway, she said, I've been blogging since 2011 and I have over 1400 posts. My ministry is based upon Titus two, three through five. Um, which commands that older women teach younger women to be sober, love, and obey their husbands, love their children, be chaste, discreet, good, and keepers at home. And if you love and learn to grow in these areas, allow God's word and his ways to transform your marriage, blah, 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 blah. So now, you know, I'm not against people that have faith by any means. What my concern is with this stuff is that she is not fond of women that work and she's very shaming if someone is like a single mother or um you know a mom has a job and you know or if a woman just doesn't agree with what she does she does a blog so um if you go to her home page you see that she has um women are leaving them you know filling your home with beauty marriage kills commitment how to find a husband so men are attracted to debt-free virgins without tattoos. Learn femininity and having a meek and quiet spirit. This means that you aren't led by your emotions, but the truth's found in God's word. Um, you need to learn homemaking skills. Men want women who are good cooks. Many women don't cook these days. They say they can't. That's absurd. Get in shape and exercise. Um, Eat less, be known for your moderation and self-control. Put down your smartphone and remind yourself that relationships are far more important than anything else on your phone. She really uh, has been too involved in politics. <laughs> Something to ponder before you go get divorced. She doesn't like divorce. She also... Um, She doesn't think women should be preachers. She doesn't, she has just so many opinions. So I just wanted to show you a video of hers. This is just sort of a rundown, but she is just, yeah, she has a lot of opinions. And if you don't agree with her, she's not okay with that. So um, 
this is her video on the biblical womanhood. And um, I was like, oh my gosh. He taught from the time they were young that their purpose in life was to get an education. Okay, so she starts off with like how it's bad that women are taught to get an education and to have a job. Sorry about that, but it's a really, really dreary day out today. So I thought it would be not as bad, but I can't seem to get that there off my eyes. I'm sorry. <laughs> but many women today are extremely offended by people. Womanhood. I would say actually most. When they first, they've been taught from the time they were young that their purpose in life was to get an education, to go to college, and get a career. And that's and none of these are bad things. This is the one thing that I don't understand about these types of people that preach like this. Like, we as women have fought for so many years to have equality and to vote and to be able to work outside of the home and to be able to like have a life beyond just having children. So this whole idea that it's like wrong for us to want to go to school, want to have a job, want to be educated. It's like it was the fact that we weren't educated that kept us in that position where we were so dominated and didn't have any sort of control or choice or voice. So it's like taking a step backward in time. And it's funny because she's doing all of this yet she is on a youtube channel she has a blog she has a job she's doing all of this to make money she's not doing this out of the kindness of her heart she wouldn't be doing this if it didn't make her money that those what they've been taught isn't combated in the churches at all most parents save up their money from the time they're little to send their little girls to school a lot of them have are from the and is that wrong? I think that's admirable for a parent to save up their money and want to send their children to school and to want to have their daughters be educated. Homes or mothers who are working all the time, so they're raised in daycare and school. Systems. So this is the funny thing. She says that the women that like want to be educated and go to school and all of that are like women that have mothers that work full time and that mothers that that they grow up in daycare. I grew up with a mom that stayed at home and I was, my mom wanted me to go to college and my mom worked part-time while I was in school, while I was little so that she could be home with me. And she wanted me to have a full-time job. She wanted me to do more than what I did. And I didn't grow up in daycare. I didn't grow up at all in daycare. I was with my mom all the time. I went home and my mom was at home with me. Like I didn't have daycare to go to. It's so odd to me because, and my parents are still married. I didn't grow up in a divorced home. My parents have been married for 51 years. So when they happen upon my blog and my teaching, it's like, what? <laughs> This is crazy. This is this is lies. This can't be true, you know. Especially these women who are deeply, deeply in debt from school debt, have really high-powered careers, and are kind of trapped. You know, they doctors I know have shared with me how they regret the path that they've taken. So she also doesn't like that you have debt for whatever reason. I don't understand this whole thing they have, this obsession about debt. It makes no sense to me. Like school debt is not the worst thing in the world. Um, it means you were educated and it also means that unfortunately you had to find a way to get educated. But it, I don't think it's anything that we should be shaming people for having. Um, I'll never understand this shame of school debt. It's like the weirdest thing to me. And I highly doubt that like doctors are contacting her being like, hey, yeah, I so regret that I'm a doctor. It's like the worst job in the world. I can't believe I actually helped people and took a hip and, and took an oath to do no harm and to make people well and take care of people. Because they can't be home with their children, even if they have to work two or three days a week. It's time consuming. It's time away from their children they don't like it and they feel trapped and so when women hear, see what i teach i work and i don't feel trapped are you a woman that feels trapped because you have a job 
I don't understand this lady. I think it's a conviction. It's like, wait a second. I've been taught completely opposite of what you're teaching me. Oh, my husband gave me a super chat. Watch it. Watch her while I say goodnight to him. Completely opposite. In fact, when I wrote on my Facebook page of the day, you must live a very sad and lonely life. And my husband saw that and jumped in. Her life is far from sad and lonely. In fact, she's the most joyful woman I know. You know, I have grandkids and family and friends. I'm far from being sad or lonely. In fact, my joy comes from knowing who I am in Christ. And the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And then another woman type wrote underneath it and said, you know, I felt for that so much time my whole entire life, that my worth and value was in a career and paycheck. And it wasn't until I started reading what I write. Okay. I have no idea what she said, but that was the cutest thing ever. So I went to go see my son. It's my husband's night. I We tra trade off nights. And he's watching this right now with his daddy in bed. And I just want to say, hi, honey. Hi, monster. I love you. I blowed you a kiss. I blowed you a kiss. It's time to go to night. Go see you with your daddy. He was like so enamored that I was on YouTube. It was so cute. The, the woman had God's way for it. They all made sense. It finally made sense. Most women will tell me, many women have written me and tell me, I hated what you wrote when I first started reading what you wrote. I was disgusted with it. But I kept right reading and it started making sense. I feel like people just don't stop making sense. They just become brainwashed. Am I the only one that literally thinks that if you just would watch this more and more and more? Oh, he just blew me a kiss. Aww. I blowed you a kiss. That's what he always says is, I blowed you a kiss. <laughs> He's the cutest. Okay. See, feminism never got a hold of me. I shared this in another YouTube. I, I just hope. I hope you're okay, Katie. Blessed be love from your, thank you. Dinosaurs. It's his. It's my son's birthday on Sunday. It wasn't. I didn't like school that much. You know, I felt like all I really needed to do was read and write and do math, and then I'd be set. And you really are. You know, it's, it's, if you can read and research and do math and write, you're you're on your way to pretty much doing whatever you want. If you don't need, you don't want to go to medical school or dental school or something. So anyway, this woman said that now. You know, she was lied to by the feminist movement. Am I the only one that finds her voice like very monotone and like boring? Like I can't believe people watch her. And now she's living a biblical womanhood lifestyle. And she said, and in this lifestyle, it's freedom, abundant freedom and joy. And the feminist feminism is a lie. It's completely opposite of what God's will for. It's a lie, you guys. It's a lie. Woman is. God wants women to marry, bear children, guide the home. And I always get, what about, you know, single women or barren women? All women were made to nurture. So even single women will have animals to nurture. They'll find some way to nurture. Barren women can adopt or foster. Oh my God. The way that she talks about women that cannot have children or don't want to have children barren children who talks like this Ugh. take care of their nieces and nephews there's always a way to nurture women always whether you're married or not i think he wants the majority of women to be married i think it's a lot harder in our culture today because it's kind of frowned upon and kids are getting married later and later in life so it's hard I think still think it's his perfect will. It's not good for man to be alone. So but it's not good for man to be alone. Well, I just think it's every it's not even human nature. It's like human nature for us to be with someone. So I don't, you know, she has a lot to say. Um, you know, I will be putting some more of her stuff in, but I want to actually get to classical abbey because this lady has me 
seen red red i was actually watching a few of her videos and i was like i can't even believe this is like a thing so let me show you her and i'm sure some of you that are here already know classical abby but um this is like my dive into her i just wanted to show you um so you can see because i was noticing on her YouTube channel, it didn't start out the way that it is. And uh, it changed. All right, so here's her YouTube channel. Now, when I went all the way down to the bottom, she was like trying to do makeup tutorials. And she was like, music, she's an opera singer. So hairstyles, singing the national anthem, um, wet and wild. She was trying to be sort of like a makeup influencer, it looks like, and music influencer. And something happened and she did a video. Let me find it. And it got a ton of views. And after that, the channel completely changed. So you can see like, as she's like going up here, it's like Christmas, where I've been, get ready with me, hair, fall decor, fall makeup, you know, um, watching movies, makeup, Hanukkah, uh, more reviews, another makeup tutorial, a song, doing her hair, eating vegetarian. It There was nothing like political here, modest fashion, um, but it's this one. This video gets a million views and it's 10 things you should know before becoming a wife, right? And it was after this video that her content switches over to this more like controversial style. And she's Ben Shapiro's younger sister. She does not have children. She is relatively young. She is relatively newly married. And I'm always, I always find it ironic when a newly married person is giving you advice on how to be married and how to find someone that you're married. And I always find it ironic when people are telling you how to be like a wife or a child, like a, you know, I just always think it's so weird. I have never given marriage advice. That's not how I do things. Um, I always, I used to do blogging stuff and I always thought the like the 10 things or the five things was so weird because it's like, I'm not an expert. Why would I pretend to be an expert? So it's two all at once and that can cause a little bit of friction. So when you're getting married, recognize that maybe the first year isn't going to just so much easier. <laughs> so she has this viewpoint that only people who are conservative actually value marriage, which I think is really ironic because my husband and I are liberal and we are like ride or die, marriage is serious. Like her idea is that like, unless you're um, a conservative, you can't value marriage. Now marriage isn't hard the first year, but what it is is that it's just a lot of adjustments. You're getting used to living with a new person. You have to get used to their habits, what they like eating, how they like to keep the house clean. And it's so much to get used to all at once. And that can cause a little bit of friction. So when you're getting married, recognize that maybe the first year isn't gonna just be daisies and roses all the time. There are times where you're gonna be just trying to adjust to living with another person all the time. This the I think it's just odd. Like, what qualifies her to give this advice? Well, but what it does mean is that he doesn't really mind clutter. So if he comes home and he puts it down, he doesn't like dust. So I don't like clutter and he doesn't like... You know, the thing for us is that I love when everything is in its place. I like when things are organized, when everything is put away. He doesn't like dust. So I don't like clutter and he doesn't like dirt. So for me, that evens out pretty well. But what it does mean is that he doesn't really mind clutter. So if he comes home and he puts down something on a, on a chair, it might just stay there for a while. <laughs> and that took me a little bit of time to get used to because... Okay, I can actually relate to this. Sadly, I can relate to this. We're the same way, my husband and I. I would say, oh, why can't you just understand what bothers me? 
But at the same time, I don't really understand what bothers him. So be forgiving of each other and just recognize that you're going to want things to be clean in a different way. Okay. If you're only figuring these things out in the first year of marriage, how long were you dating? Were you guys not like together for any period of time? This is odd to me. I knew all of my husband's likes and dislikes by the time we got married. Nothing was a shock. Nothing was a surprise. There was no surprises. He is, and that's not a bad thing. You'll just even out, and you guys will kind of take responsibility for different things around the house. Now, another funny thing, for example, is that my husband, and I've heard this is common, always puts his clothes next to the hamper, not in it, next to it. And I always laugh about that. He did explain the reason to me, which is that we have two hampers and he never knows which one is white and which one is colors. That's not, my husband puts his clothes in the hamper. Is that, is she trying to say that men don't understand how to do laundry? And sometimes I mix them up because I like to just sort them when I get down to the laundry room. But it's still like, just put it in the hamper. It'll be fine. <laughs> so there are... That's weird. Is she making this really more complicated than it needs to be? Videos or ask your mom and get some recipes under your belt. Now, not all wives cook. I can totally respect that. I just love cooking for my husband. I think it's a really nice thing to do. And I found that there are certain recipes that I'm really glad I knew before I got married because I can just throw them in the pot or throw them in the pot. Okay, so cooking and cleaning. Be mindful of each other's space. Now, not everybody needs space, but most people need at least a little bit of it. Why does this video have a million views? There's literally nothing in this video that warrants a million views to me, honestly. Did this, is this one of the videos that got promoted so heavily? To take care of your looks. Now, oh my God, here we go. Here we go. Here it is. Together. When you're living together and you're married, you're with each other even when you're not with each other. So it's just really important to recognize when you each need a little bit of space. Number five is to take care of your looks. Now, always again, this might be, I guess, sort of controversial, but I don't think it is. I think it's really easy when you get married because you're with this person and you know that they love you to just not take care of yourself as much. And even for your own sake, that can start to feel a little bit bad. So... I don't understand this whole mindset of like women and men not taking care of themselves. Like I understand you get comfortable, but like, why is this always like a sticking point? Like, why is it that women have to take care of their looks? Like don't men have to take care of their looks? Don't men have to be like mindful of the calories that they're eating? Don't men have to do these things? Honestly, before I was on YouTube, I rarely wore makeup. I have to wear makeup on the camera. Otherwise, I look so washed out. And it's like, if I wasn't on camera all day, I wouldn't have makeup on. And my husband still thought I was beautiful. This whole idea, like taking care of our looks, I don't understand this. If you feel me on this, leave some comments. So for me, it's important to, you know, shave my legs. Well, now I epilate, but <laughs> when I shave. Okay, um, we actually discussed that she is Ben Shapiro's sister in the beginning of this video. So thanks for letting us know, Kristen. But I did, I said that in the very beginning. If you're just catching us live, she is Ben Shapiro's sister. Okay, and to get my hair cut and to keep up with my makeup routine and just to keep yourself looking nice because it... Okay, but these are like just basic things that anyone does. Did you like... I have a question. When you got married, did you just stop cutting your hair? Did you stop taking a shower? Did you stop shaving your legs? Like, why would you stop shaving your legs? That doesn't even make sense to me. Did you only shave your legs so that you could get a man? I just don't like hair on my legs. It means something to your husband and it'll mean something to yourself. And at least for me, I feel so much better when I just take a few minutes in the morning, do my hair, do my makeup, put on a nice outfit. And it's funny though, because she doesn't even really look like she's wearing that much makeup. So I don't know what she looks like when she doesn't wear makeup. I'm not, and I would never shame her at all. Like, it's just, it's odd to me, this whole thing. I keep myself looking nice and put together. And I think that husbands really appreciate. Yes, this is what I like. Here, where is it? 
I wear makeup for me and I shave my legs for me, not a man. Exactly. It's funny because once I got into makeup, now I used to be in makeup a long time ago, but um, yeah, she says a lot of things as fact without any sort of proof, like at all. She's speaking so factual about things as though this is just like what every single woman does. I shave my legs for me. I wear makeup for me. My husband happens to like that I wear makeup, but I didn't wear makeup for him and I wouldn't spend this amount of time putting makeup on for him. It's for me because I like makeup. I like to play with makeup. I like to explore makeup. I like to try different looks. That's not about him. That too, because they don't want to ask you to put on makeup. And a lot of them don't like makeup. My husband actually does it, but <laughs> they don't want to ask you to. So she's admitting that she wears makeup, but that her husband doesn't even like makeup. So then who is she putting the makeup on for? This is so hypocritical. If she's supposed to be doing things that her husband likes, then he would appreciate that she just be natural. And there would be no need at all for her to wear makeup. The hypocrisy here is so thick. I can't even understand this. Kind of shave your legs. I mean, if your legs aren't shaven, they're not gonna say anything maybe, but they also would maybe like it for you to shave. So keeping those things in mind and just trying to like look nice for your partner as if you're still dating. But you just said that your husband doesn't care. So why are you doing those things? This is what I don't get. Her husband doesn't care that she wears makeup and yet she puts makeup on and he doesn't care. So then she's really just like trying to find an excuse for wearing makeup where she doesn't feel like she's being vain maybe. I mean, these are like, yeah, exactly. Isn't this just everyday life? Exactly. Linda, thank you. I don't shave my legs because I don't want to. And my boyfriend does not care. I do my makeup though because I love doing my makeup. Exactly, Emmy. Yes, you love your makeup. And I like your blue uh, lipstick in that video or in that photo, Emmy. Thank you for always being a conscious contributor on this channel. You are a good voice. It's a really nice thing to do. Number six is it's okay to change for your partner. I know how crazy is that to say. <laughs> now, let me be clear what that means. When you get married, your partner really wants the best for you and for the life that you're building together. And sometimes they may notice things about you that you could work on. And if they ask you to work on something, that's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean that they don't love you for who you are. Why do I feel like this is gonna be like, she needs to be more submissive or something? It means that they love you for who you are and who you could be. Okay, get to the point. Let your partner come to you and tell you that there are certain things that they're noticing that you could do better. Oh, you could do things better. Okay, what is it? Tell me. That I think that you should improve on. But those are things that shouldn't be off the table. You should definitely be able to talk to your partner and he should be able to talk to you about how the two of you can improve together as a team and as individuals. My seventh piece of it. Okay, but what, what are they improving? Did I miss it? That shouldn't be off the table. You should definitely be able to talk to your partner to each other. And of course, you can do the same thing to your partner. You can say there are certain things that I think that you should improve on. Think about being in a home that is lived in by a woman. There's a really feminine vibe that you bring to your home that your husband wouldn't have without you there. Okay, who has a husband that is actually a better decorator than you? My husband is actually more aesthetically interested in the um, the ambiance of the house than I am. When we started dating, my husband was very, he loves ornate things. He actually is an artist. He makes wood burning things like this, for instance. He, he, cut, he does wood carvings and he builds things and he's very into intricate, like we have stuff of his that he makes all over the house. Things that he cares more about than I do. He actually helps me with decorating. I feel like my husband brings the vibes in, a, in this house more than I do. 
So take advantage of that. Make his house your house and make it a home that he's so happy to come home to because it's warm and loving and cozy. My eighth piece of advice is that you can still be friends with your single friends. <laughs> I, what? Is this like a thing that you can't do? I've heard from a lot of single women that they get really nervous when their friends get engaged and are getting married because they don't know if they're still going to be able to maintain that friendship. I can say from my experience, it's so important. And so I love being friends with everybody. And you can still go out with them every once in a while on your own. You don't necessarily have to. Oh, you can still pity your single friends. What is this? This is weird. Your husband dinner or hang out with him or you're going to be on date night or whatever it is. But your actual relationship with your girlfriends doesn't have to change. And you can still go out with them every once in a while on your own. You don't necessarily have to take your husband along and have her be a third wheel. You okay, but your friendships will change. They will. They will. Because your life will change. I don't get it. I'm I'm missing the point. Where is the like this has a million views? What is in here that like actually tells me anything? This should be like groundbreaking. A place where you're not allowed to bring home people that you enjoy their company and friends that you want to play cards with and stuff like that. So just make always be very mindful in an argument not to say something in the heat of the moment that your partner can't unhear. Okay. So did you look at this? This has 34,000 down votes and only 15,000 up votes. So she's getting a lot of hate watchers, which whatever. Um, but that was the video that really sort of propelled her, right? But that's not the video that I actually wanted to show you because there was one that was like by far worse. Which one was it? Okay, it's this video. There's a video titled Why I Love My Conservative Life. And I don't think she quite understands that like people who aren't conservative can hold these same values. Okay, here it is. And this is videos about why marriage is so important to me, why it's something I'm so glad I did and why it's the best choice I ever made. But I really wanna talk about- Wow, she's got more makeup on. She's more polished. Got that from a conservative perspective. Okay, from a conservative perspective. Now, if you are someone who is not conservative, but you love marriage, hooray. Statistics, for example, talk about it from a conservative perspective, is that conservatives really value marriage. We okay, do people who are liberal not value marriage? This is the weirdest thing to me. I think it's something that actually is important, and it's important to the building of a society. So, Okay, but I think that marriage is important, too. So do I not, does my voice not count? Because I think it's important. My marriage is important to me. When you look at the statistics, for example, there's a very famous statistic by Haskins and Sawhill in their book, Creating an Opportunity Society, where they say that if you do three things, if you fulfill three norms, which is finish high school, get married before you have children and work a full-time job, then 73.8% of people who do that are in the middle class. And so being married is one of those three norms that makes it so much better for our society to get married. To get Okay, but most people get married. I don't, what is she telling me? She's not saying anything that's interesting. This is so weird. Lives and how enriching it is, but also to society and American society as a whole. But again, if you're on the other side of the aisle and you love marriage too, that's great. And it's not to say that you can't love marriage if you're not conservative. It's just that conservative women look at marriage a little bit differently and a little bit more of a necessity than just, oh, this is a really nice thing that people do and should do and love to do. So she is qualifying that if you are not conservative, you don't value marriage in the same way that she values marriage. So her marriage is better than your marriage. This is so bizarre to me. There's no such thing as like your. This doesn't make sense to me. Marriage should be first off. I'm not going to pontificate, but I will say that you shouldn't get married unless you think it's important. You also shouldn't get into a relationship if you don't think it's important. But I have two parents, by the way, 
who are Democrats. They've been Democrats their whole lives and they have been married for 51 years. That So is their marriage not as taken seriously? It doesn't mean the same thing to my mom and dad. And it doesn't mean the same thing to me. And my family doesn't mean the same thing to me. I don't get it. I value my marriage and I'm a liberal and I do not agree with her. Exactly. So I'm excited to share with you guys why I love being married from a conservative perspective. So let's get into it. One of the things that I absolutely love about being married is that I'm married to a man who believes in marriage as much as I do. Okay, but I'm married to a man that believes in marriage as much as I do. Isn't that the point of getting married? You just get married to someone who believes in marriage? Like, do, do you think that it, at our house, they sit around and they just think that liberals think that marriage is disposable and they can just get divorced? And has she not, like, I hate to, like, point this out, but the president of the United States, I think he's been married four times. There's a lot of conservatives that get divorced. And I don't think there's less conservatives that get divorced than liberals. I would have to look that up. That's just me saying this. But she says all of this like it's so factual. When you're conservative, it's important to marry someone who shares your values. And my husband and I were always on the same page about what marriage meant. But that okay, meant someone said about the Bible. She's actually not Christian. She's Jewish. So perhaps she's talking about her Jewish faith. I don't know. But she's not. She's um, She's Jewish, just so you guys know. I don't think a marriage is based on politics. Mine isn't, that is. We both agree everything and on everything and that helps, but we both have one another's back regardless because he's my life partner. Exactly, that's exactly how my husband and I are. We don't agree on everything. We have relatively similar politics, but we don't have the same politics. That marriage for us was a huge decision that we didn't take lightly. Okay, so did you take your marriage lately? Because I didn't take my marriage lately. And it was a decision that even now the two of us are constantly checking in with each other and knowing that this is going to be something that's going to go the distance. Okay. Yes. Does she really think that what she's saying is like groundbreaking? Does she really believe that liberals don't think these things? This is so weird to we me. We don't view marriage as something that we just did because we fell in love. We oh, okay. View it as this is the building block for us to have family. Yes. But you don't need to be married to have a family. For the community, and this is long term. So okay, but most people don't get married just for the fun of it. Like, people don't generally get married because they think they're going to get divorced. I am under the impression that this is their attitude. They believe that their thoughts are superior and better than the rest of us. I'm super liberal, but I have values. I don't play with my family or friendships. I'm sort of the same way. She is, um, many conservatives seem to have marriage issues, says um, Taylor. I don't under, this is so weird to me. But anyways, let's continue. So when I look at my husband and we talk about marriage, it's very comforting to me to know that he feels as strongly about our marriage as I do. Okay, but that's normal. If you're with a partner who doesn't feel strongly about your marriage, you are with the wrong partner, right? Like you wouldn't have gotten married to that person if you didn't both feel the same way. And about how important it is for us to work on it and make sure it's healthy and our relationship stays together. And okay, so are conservatives the only one that have these conversations? I'm still confused how this is different than any marriage. P.S. You guys, if you are a conservative, I don't hate you because I don't think that marriage is political. It's literally just marriage. Whether you are a Democrat, Republican, non-believer, believer, marriage is marriage. And it doesn't care if you have political beliefs or not. And it's not a political thing. It's marriage. And we stay on the same page as regards our relationship. So we really do take care of our marriage, make sure to talk about it, communicate, obviously, as everyone says, communication is the key to marriage. And it's so true. I wonder how many years she's actually been married. Married. They don't have any kids. That's the thing. Like, oh. And we are always checking in with each other because I don't have to fear that my husband views marriage as something that's temporary. 
who do most men <laughs> get married and they're like, oh, it's temporary. Like, really? Really? Yes, it's not politically driven at all. Thanks, Katie. This is any marriage, in my opinion. Exactly. Like, why is this conservative? Like, you should you should communicate with your husband or your wife. Period. And as a married woman, as a woman. <laughs> the next reason that I love my life, being a conservative wife, is that I view my marriage and my future family and my children as the most important thing in my life. Wait a minute. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> so do I. I do. So do you, do you so are you telling me that because you're conservative, you value your family more than my family? I am so confused again how this is political. So I have other passions. I have a job. My husband has a job. But we know what we're doing it all for, and that's going to be for our family. Yeah, same with my family. <laughs> we do everything for our family. That's what marriage is about. And for the community we build and that we're a part of. And the reason that is a conservative value is because I don't have to fight with that part of myself that's thinking that I'm oppressed by the patriarchy, that feminist idea. Wait a minute. I don't think I'm oppressed by the patriarchy because I'm married. This doesn't even make sense. Okay, first off, this doesn't make sense. You're not oppressed by the patriarchy because you got married. And if you have a job, you're not oppressed by the patriarchy, sweet pea, because you're working, right? Like, how are you actually doing anything that's conservative? Your life isn't different than mine. You don't value your marriage more than I do. You don't value, value your family more than I do. Yeah, that because I'm putting family first, it means I can't put career first and I've just been oppressed by that. I don't feel that at all. I feel that as a conservative woman, I've made the right choices. I've okay, but you're a conservative woman who has a job. So tell me again how what you're doing is anything different than anyone else. It's not. Is she, does she really think she's serious? This isn't political. Marriage is marriage. Put the most important things at the forefront of my life. And it's going to be the love that I have and the values that I'm going to instill in my children and in my family. And being married has really clarified for me what my life goals are. And it's oh. Okay. It's not just for me ambition in my work, but it is that wholesome view of my life, that holistic view of my life, of a husband and family and career, which will support that. Yeah. So you're basically doing what every working mom does. There's nothing actually concerned. Marriage is not a political statement. Exactly. Okay. First of all, like, are we all are we all that are sane human being punked? Yes, I think so. She's talking about conservative things politically. Conservatives brought things into the political realm years ago, like in the 70s. Yes. You're cracking me up tonight. I had to leave the living room. You're welcome. But none of this has to do with politics. Okay, so you have you're gonna work and you're gonna have a family. Oh my god, so do I. And I'm not conservative. Oh my God. You have a husband? So do I. Oh my God. No. Do you put your family first? <gasps> so do I. Wait, is you and your husband's family goal to actually take care of your family and set each other up for the future? <gasps> oh my God. Me too. Me too. Sean said, Sharon says, been a while since. Everyone, I've been in chat. Welcome back, Sharon. So glad to see you here. Like, what is this? There... So I love that as a married woman, I can really take advantage of these parts of my life that as a single woman, it's something you look forward to. It's something that you're kind of growing towards, but not necessarily there yet. And when you're married, you can really recognize what matters. What is... Okay, but if you're single, you guys, your life still matters and you're world still matters. And if you never want to get married, by the way, your life still matters and you still matter. It's important what your purpose is and what your mission is. And I can't wait 
for the future as my husband and I continue to grow towards that with our children and our family. Now, another thing that's great now that I'm a wife is that I don't have to date anymore. Oh, but that's like, doesn't, okay, first, why I love my conservative life. But if you are married and a liberal and you're married, you don't have to date anymore. Does she really not have a brain? <laughs> Dating is so hard. Finding the person who's going to not only mesh with you personality wise, but also compatibility wise. I can't believe there's a man that actually is with her, to be honest. And is going to fit with those values that you want for your future and fit into the idea of what you want from your life is so tricky. And I bet it was hard for her because she's like a walking contradiction. So she literally had to find someone that thought as ridiculously as she did and was like, do you think that she has her husband tell her how wonderful she is and how amazing her ideas are all the time? It is so hard to find that person who fits all those things for you. And when I be trip, <laughs> whereas when you're married, that anxiety really does go away in a lot of ways. Of course, there's a lot of new anxieties, but they're much less than that big, huge question of who am I going to spend my life with? <sighs> this isn't political. There's nothing political about this. Being married to my husband is so nice because I don't have to hide my conservatism with my husband or even feel like I shouldn't say something. Of course, you guys know that I lived my life in fear of talking about being conservative. Okay. So isn't that marriage though? Like when you're married with someone, like whether or not you're conservative or liberal, you don't have to be afraid of whatever. Like you don't have to be afraid of being, if you're a libertarian, you don't have to be afraid of that. Like your spouse is going to accept that. Like that isn't political. Because I was in the arts and I'm scared about it. And if I had married somebody who didn't share my values, I would have felt nervous to bring things up. Maybe it would have started a fight, something like that. I never have to worry about that with my husband because we do share values. And that's something that I think is a conservative idea. No, it's not. It's not a conservative idea that you need to share the same values. That's just common sense. Common sense tells you that when you get married, you should be in a relationship with someone who you're compatible with and have similar thoughts and feelings with. Which is that you should marry somebody who does share your views because it's just going to make your life so much easier. Okay, did I not just say that? And I'm a liberal, gosh darn it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys, am I really a conservative and I didn't know it? Because Abby said that what I said is actually a conservative feeling. So am I actually a conservative or is she? I'm confused. And when you're trying to raise kids, you're going to be doing it with the same idea in mind. And I just love that my husband and I really don't have to worry about that. It's something. Because I guess if you're a liberal, you don't agree with your husbands on anything. I don't understand this. Like, <laughs> So it's just something that I love about being married as a conservative woman. As I've said before in my videos about marriage, we're invested in each other's growth. And you don't get that from anyone else. You don't get that from friends or parents. Also makes you realize that this person is not only helping you be a better wife, but they're also helping you be a better mother. Because by you improving, it's not just you. Wait a minute. She's going to give marriage. Oh, she's going to give parenting advice and she's not a parent. Ah. Improving for yourself and for your husband, but also for your future children. And having a husband who does help me with that and I can help him with that makes my life so much richer. I had this rule with my husband that we would not talk about how to be parents until we really were parents. I mean, like, I don't feel like, <clears throat> I don't like giving parenting advice, period. I really don't. I don't like giving parenting advice to anyone because I feel like it's, unless it's like very basic, like make sure your kid is wearing a seatbelt and you, if you're driving in a car and your kid is on the hood, you know, I might say something, but it's not my place to tell you how to raise your kids. And I just love that about being married. The thing about being married is that marriage is the basic building block of a community. It's the first part. It's a brick in the. Okay. Whoops. It's all in the ha! Classically <laughs> Deaf noodles. And this is long term. So when romance out of it, but the fact is, it's true. When two people build a building together, a contractor and a developer, they don't do it without a contract. 
support system. That's just the less romantic version of what. Okay, this is so ridiculous. There's nothing in here. Okay, but there is this one video that I noticed. I'm sorry, I could watch her videos all night. We could do this for like three hours. Um, anything can be a building block. You're 100,000% correct on that. Um, I There's this one video in here. Um, where is it? It's like why we shouldn't believe all women. I'm trying to find it. There's a video like she's like, why we shouldn't believe all women. And it's like. OK, so she doesn't like the WAP song. It's crude. She wants she's pro-life. Being conservative matters. Five ways to attract a classic. This is another one I saw that I was like. Somebody who does know the value of marriage and who does recognize what marriage is about and what it's for, then dating somebody who doesn't share your values and who doesn't have that compatibility with you is really just a waste of time. She literally thinks that if you're not a conservative, you don't value marriage. I feel sad for her, honestly. I feel sad because I would never tell my conservative friends that they don't value marriage. I would never say like, you don't know how to be a parent because you're a Republican. You don't know how to have a family because you're a Republican. You don't, I mean, like clearly people can have families and be a lot of different things. Oh, where is it? why I came out as conservative because you got like a million views. That's why. Ugh. Why we shouldn't believe all women. Why we should not just believe believe all women. I found it. Oop, even if it were true, it shouldn't be. Let's deal with number one first. It's a lie. Hashtag Believe All Women started after Brett Kavanaugh was nominated for the Supreme Court. Tons of women came out and said that he had sexually assaulted them with crazy stories that were unbelievable. But people on the left still said, hashtag Believe All Women. All women should be believed, no matter what the evidence says. No matter that there should be due process, we should throw due process out the window. If a man is accused of sexual... Okay, so we should not believe all women. Oh, God. She is literally the worst YouTuber. I can't believe, and she's done. Okay, here's what I think is hilarious here, is that she has 84,000 subscribers, and it's clear that she is not getting boosted anymore, because look, 6.1 thousand views, um, 14,000 views, 20,000 views, 6.5 23,000. Like she's not getting the kind of views she was this summer when the, when she was getting boosted because I don't see her ads anymore. But it's like obviously someone was paying for this and her her brother is Ben Shapiro and he has millions of dollars. Do you think that Ben is actually like paying for this to be boosted?
I don't know. And I don't feel like that hashtag came from that specific issue. We believe survivors. She comes from such a place of privilege. Correct. I don't, okay. If you were to speak out about being a conservative, I would say don't speak out. Don't engage in a conversation like that. You can always kind of imply that you don't really want to talk about, you don't think that you have enough information to actually make a good point. And I wouldn't recommend engaging in a conversation when you don't really know what you're talking about, because you're going to end up feeling a little, there are things that have nothing to do with politics. Maybe. Wait a minute. She's telling people not to speak out about their conservativeness, but she speaks out about her conservativeness. I am, this is so confusing and they thought I was a little bit crazy for being conservative and peer pressure was difficult. What I'll say is that I really took a step back from politics when I started doing opera, specifically for this reason, where I... The next question is how to deal with professors who lean toward the left. Stuart isn't talking about the backlash you're gonna get. Opinion in the workplace, you should keep those views to yourself anyways. The next question is, is it better to speak up about things I care about and risk receiving backlash or no? These aren't conservative or Republican or like, this is just common sense. There's just certain things you don't need to talk about publicly if you want to make people upset. You know, this woman literally is ridiculous. Why? Oh, she's got so many of these videos. Why I love my conservative. Hello, beautiful lady. How many? found that being part of a community is a really big part of that. And it's part of the reason that I absolutely love being conservative is that I do have this community and this support system. And that's part of the reason why on my channel, I'm trying to create a community. Okay, you guys, we have a community here. Do we not? Do we not have a community here? And we don't care if you're conservative or, or liberal. You can just be whoever you want to be. I don't understand this woman. She's entitled to her views. She is entitled to her views, but I don't like that the way that she says her views are so factual. Like when I speak about things, I always try to say like, this is my opinion. This is what I believe. And she just literally says things as though it is. And she provides no factual ba basis for why she believes what she does. It's just like, whether she got boosted or not, she's just getting just as many, if not more than you, and you have 50. Okay. That do, that's irrelevant. I'm saying like she was boosted before and she was getting a ton of views because she was being boosted. That's why we're talking about her. I don't boost my channel. I don't pay for advertisement. I don't. I just have never. I, I should, but I don't. She needs to do some research before she speaks some jargon. And I'm not like, I don't care if people's channels do well. I was just, that was like just a notice of, if you look at her recent views, she's clearly not being boosted anymore because her views went down. And she was getting very high views before when everyone was seeing her advertisements and in their views, but like in their high ranks up, but they weren't actually getting, you know, I'm not seeing as many advertisements for her as I used to. Now, if you are, that's fine, but I'm not. Be honest, you don't like that she's blowing you out of the water with views and you have 50K more subscribers? No, I don't care about her views, to be honest. I'm just, it's pretty obvious here. And if you look at her ratios here, people are hate watching her. And I honestly don't care if she gets views. I don't. People can, that's why you should be on YouTube, to get views. I just think it's an interesting dive because she has 6.1 yesterday. But if you look in the summer when she was boosting, 
you know, it's like 101, 153, 124. Um, when she was advertising more, the views were up. I don't really care about necessarily people getting views. I mean, I, I want every channel to be productive, frankly, if that's what they're trying to do with their jobs. I'm just reacting to it. You don't boost. Do you actually watch? You do research and you share much of what we are interested in. Good, bad, ugly, and funny. Well, thank you. Maybe she used, she could be. Yeah, she no longer shows up in my feed too. That was kind of my point, as I'm not getting any advertisements for her. Um, Katie has more loyal fans, which makes a big difference. Thank you. I definitely have videos that don't perform as well. I mean, that's part of being on YouTube. And then you have periods of time which have lower viewership. That's YouTube as well. Um, like there's days of the week that don't perform as well as other days. There's topics. Like this specific topic isn't gonna get me as many views as other topics because one, no one, a lot of my subscribers don't know who she is. To some of my subscribers don't want to watch this kind of stuff. You know, that's the nature of YouTube. You know, I I test things all the time. But I just, you noticed, I just am noticing the dip and then she's not showing up in my feed. You know, she's not, her advertisements aren't showing up anymore. She's literally just making videos to make money. Obviously, most people do. <clears throat> I think she's pleasant to listen to and relatable, which is weird because if I remember right, Ben used to trigger me like crazy. You thought she was pleasant to listen to. That's interesting. We do have a community, and I love that. But I wonder if there would be backlash if I talked about politics. I so hope someday we live in a society where people can speak and agree and disagree. I don't honestly care if you guys share your politics. I don't expect everyone to be <clears throat> liberal by any means. I I think it's just, you know, I find it ironic that if I say I am a Democrat, that people will say, well, I can't support you. And I don't feel like if you're a Republican, I can't support you. I support your opinion and your thoughts and whatever. I, in her specific videos, my criticism is that she is making things political that aren't political. Marriage values on being, you know, having a short, a joined, shared commonality and passion for family doesn't matter if you're liberal or conservative. It, you just, you get married because, you know, you want the same things. Um, I'm actually not talking about this content anymore because we're not going there anymore. I am any person that has success, I will be happy for. Like, I'm not here to bash anyone and I'm not going to, I just don't want to talk about that topic anymore because I'm actually moving away from that topic, period. I'm not going to be talking about it anymore on this channel. You have no idea who she is, so you open it. Exactly. What's wrong with boosting ads? There's nothing wrong with boosting ads at all. At all. Um, my point was that she was boosting so much, and there's been a lot of criticism based on the fact that she has <clears throat> a channel that wasn't getting as many views, and she must have been spending a ton of money to boost to have them so high up. So the thought process is, is that Ben, her brother, who is a multimillionaire, might have been paying for that boost. That's it. it. That's it. I'm not judging that. I'm just saying, like, that's it. You, If you want to boost, you should boost. If you most, nobody's going to tell you that you shouldn't advertise. That's, you know, you have to advertise. Who is condescending? I'm confused. Okay. 
my chat is like You found Fundy Friday too, and the YouTuber is an absolute hoot. I haven't watched her very much, but I know she does like impressions and stuff. I don't, I don't have time to watch a lot of YouTube, to be honest. But that chat is so much slower. That, um, she's been married for two and a half years. Okay, see, that's the thing is like, talk to me when you've been married maybe 20 years. Okay, Abby, nobody is criticizing her boosting. I feel like that's getting lost on people. <laughs> Nobody's criticizing her boosting, period. Just so you guys know, nobody's criticizing her boosting. She can boost if she wants. She can boost all day if she wants. That's less than me. All right. That's less than you. You guys are cute. Okay. Yes, I know. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you. All right. So what do we think about Classical Abbey? Like, what do you think about people that, um, much like Audrey, that's a, yeah. What do you think about people that politic? like make things political that aren't really political. Like, does that, do you get the same sort of visceral reaction to that that I do? I feel like things, there's just some things that aren't political. Marriage to me wasn't, I didn't marry my husband. I didn't walk into my marriage and say, I'm gonna just not be your partner for the rest of my life. And I'm not going to try to make this work. And I'm not going to, put our family first. I feel like it was a commitment we both made. If you wanted to boost channels, you wouldn't slate your other channels so much. Have you been married for 20 years? I'm totally confused here. I don't know what this has to do with anything. It's not $2 per day, actually, Abby. Um, that's actually not true. So to you don't spend $2 a day to boost your channel, not in the way that she did. Um, you can spend an infinite amount of money to boost your channel, infinite. It's not just like $2. You can spend, you set the budget. You can spend $100 a day. You can spend $3,000 a day. So it's really not. Marriage is not political. However, I think it could only marry someone with the same political views as me. She seems to be obsessed with her ideals, making it her whole identity. It's very annoying. I don't know why everything needs to be political. Exactly. I don't really, it's odd to me. And advertising is very big money, especially if you want to have your videos so that everyone sees it. Like everyone was seeing these videos because everyone on Twitter was like, why am I seeing all of her ads? I should start a vlog about marriage. My husband and I have been married for 36 days. <laughs> Congratulations, Michelle, on your marriage. That's so, I'm so, um, that's amazing. You should, um, you should for sure, for sure. It's not a problem. 
Um, you can boost your channel as much. The problem is there's no problem. I would. Ugh, why are people so stuck on this topic? It doesn't make any sense. We're gonna move on from that and I'd like the chat to move on from that as well because I've said repeatedly that's not the issue. Okay. Um, I'm always amazed by anyone that's a marriage expert when they've not been married for very long. For sure. For sure. Please do Michelle Duggar. I'm joyfully available. I just really liked Abby's um, take on marriage because Jim Bob and I really do think that marriage is um, a political thing. And I'm just so happy about that. My hair is finally growing out. Yes. A lot of you guys were like, oh my gosh, Katie, your hair. It's so I didn't, I haven't gotten it cut recently. Honestly, there was no haircuts. Um, it's just finally at a length now where we are at a bob, which we've been working very hard at. So, and these right here, I was having, I was pulling these back because um, they got really damaged, um, and they were growing out and they were really uneven, but now my, uh, hairstylist fixed these and we've repaired my hair so that it is not as damaged or burnt as before. My very close friends are at about to hit 500k subs and don't advertise. I think it's about a YouTuber and their content and they're not advertising. Yeah, I mean, if you want to advertise, that's fine. I don't advertise. I do a lot of different ways to like make this channel. Like, Jessa, thank you for your super sticker. I appreciate it. You're very sweet. Oh, it's a unicorn too. I love when people say this is going to get deleted. I'm not going to delete this just so that you, I can prove you wrong. Nadia, thank you for your super sticker. It is looking very healthy. It's taken a long, long time. <laughs> a long, long time. Yes, she did used to be a short skirt. All right, you're late. Oh, Scarlett's finally here, yay. Yay, pants. Oh, I'm not doing a pixie cut. Taylor, I'm not doing a pixie cut, but I appreciate that. They don't get deleted but that's okay. Are you going to hit up some Girl Defined tonight? Um, oh God. Girl Defined, I haven't really been watching lately and my battery is about to die on my camcorder. So um, probably not. It wasn't deleted. That comment was not deleted. It is still there. Sorry. I didn't delete the, who deleted it? Oh, Jesse, why did you delete that comment? Okay, Jesse deleted that comment. I did not delete that comment. I would not have deleted that comment. No need to delete that comment, Jesse. Sorry, Tiffany, I didn't delete it. I had no part of that. That was not me. No need. I didn't delete it. it. Wasn't me. Can't say it was me. Okay. Yep. 
Jesse Bear accidentally apparently decided to delete it, but I did not delete it. All right. I know people are touchy. Thank you, AR, for your super chat. I appreciate it. I don't know why it matters, to be honest. Um, oh my gosh, I've been using a camcorder for a long time. Long time. I haven't been using a webcam for months. Months and months and months and months and months. Don't call out your loyal subscriber out and embarrass her for deleting comments like you tell her to. Um, I didn't tell her to delete that comment. <laughs> and Jesse is, um, Jesse and I talk all the time. She's actually not a loyal subscriber. She actually works for me. So um, she has a big girl, she's got a big girl thick skin and she can handle it. Well, I am sorry if my mods are deleting things all the time that shouldn't be deleted. Sometimes things get deleted that should be deleted. I don't control, and I'm not always live, so I will tell you that I don't actually delete comments. So thank you, Emmy, for your super chat. Thank you. Mods are not perfect. They aren't. They make mistakes. I had two mods that I had to add on the fly. So, oh, I I threw her under the bus. Je Jesse, do you forgive me? Did I throw you under the bus, Jesse? <laughs> no, Jesse's fine. Jesse makes mistakes. Jesse's fine. Um, get your mammograms. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Make sure you um, get your, check your stuff. There's no issues with me and Jesse. Okay. <laughs> Granny says I never get deleted. I'm just saying. Yes, we already talked about classical Abby being her. Um... <laughs> yes, I love you, Katie. I love you too, Jesse. I literally was texting Jesse. Um, I text her during streams, after streams. I just want to rub the dog's belly. That's always laying on the back. That's Frida. So there you go. <laughs> That's Frida. She's sleeping. Thank you. All right. Um, also, infertility and miscarriage month. Check in with your infertile friends. Thank you, Kathleen, for that update. I did not know that. So do that. Why isn't... Uh oh. Can you delete this comment so I know what it feels like? No, I'm not going to delete that comment. That's funny. I love that dog. Everyone loves that dog. Do you want to have a moment with Frida? <laughs> That's Frida. <laughs> She's ridiculous. She's such a baby. She is such a big baby. Such a baby. How did my hair get damaged? Um, we did um so last June. 
So a year ago, June, so a year and a half ago, year and three months ago, um, I decided to um, dye my hair purple in honor of my friend JB who passed away and he was gay and he passed away before the, um, there was the ability, before it was legal to get married as a, like before gay marriage or same sex marriage was illegal. And so he passed away um, 10 years ago. And so last year just, and June was his birth. So he, June is his birthday. And then like, I was just like, I, it was pride month. So I was like, I want to dye my hair purple in honor of him. And so we did the whole like vibrant colors and it just completely destroyed my hair. Um, my hair is really sensitive. And then I got really stressed out after my hair was already fragile. And then it was like, I had this really stressful period and then my hair was already getting like stressed out from that dye. And then it would just, it started breaking off. So it was kind of the perfect storm. Thank you, Christina for Christian for your super chat. What's up nerds. Hey, honey. I did a whole, yes, I did a whole video on losing my hair. It was very traumatic actually. I'll touch my hair as much. Yes, yes. When my hair, when I was stressed, my hair just fell out and then I lost a lot of hair after I had my son, but not to this degree. <laughs> All right, so we're at almost an hour and a half and I am exhausted. And um, I thought of you in my Spanish class. Oh, that's cute. I love Frida Kahlo. Frida is your whole mood. And she's named after Frida Kahlo. All right. So thank you guys. Um, positive notes to end. Yes. All right. So marriage is not political. And um, I am going to touch my hair as much as I want to touch my hair. And if it makes you upset, um, I touch my hair not because I'm vain. It's just what I do. So if that bothers you, I don't know what to tell you. But anyways, um, The streams I mod on Twitch are LGBTQ+, so this means a lot to me, especially. Well, thanks. I'm glad. I hope you guys have a good night, and marriage is not political. Bye.